Welcome back, everyone. Can't wait to join you here today on this Cabral Concept. This is episode 2407, stephencabral.com forward slash 2407. I'm going to be linking up research for you here today if you want to check that out, as well as the top three takeaways from the show, which we put every single day on each podcast. Uh, what I want to go over today, though, are the root causes for autoimmune diseases. So it might be something like lupus or psoriasis or Hashimoto's or rheumatoid arthritis. Name any one of your autoimmune-based diseases, and you're going to start to find what the true underlying root cause is. Now, again, this was known 30-plus years ago. It really was. Because when I was going to natural health practitioners over 25 years ago now for my idiopathic immunological issues that conventional medicine couldn't figure out, they were already looking at the gut. You know, they knew this because it had been taught now for thousands of years, whether it's TCM, traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, traditional naturopathy. Certainly, they've been doing a lot with it since the 1800s with traditional naturopathy and bioregulatory medicine. Um, but the, the truth is that things are always known first in natural health as to what works, again, with all herbs and with minerals and vitamins, et cetera. And at first, uh, conventional medicine always laughs at these things. So for example, example, you would have literally been laughed out, because I was, of uh, doctor's offices and dismissed if you would ever say that your gut or leaky gut or intestinal permeability had anything to do with autoimmune issues. And that's not the only thing, of course, that I'll be talking about here today, because there's some science that I want to share with you on uh, environmental-based uh, issues as well. So the thing is, do understand whatever is laughed at today if there is efficacy in Ayurvedic medicine, meaning they've talked about it in Ayurvedic medicine, they've talked about it in other forms of medicine, most likely you're going to see it come true in the future. You're just going to see it with a more modern day twist on it. And that's totally fine as well. I like to be able to back up the best of ancient base wisdom with state of the art lab testing and, and state of the art medicine as well. So again, I'm, I'm all for both. I really am. I mean, the whole thing about the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute is we integrate everything, right? We're not practicing conventional medicine. We're practicing natural health as health coaches, natural health practitioners, et cetera. Uh, but do keep in mind, we're using the, the state of the art science. There's no doubt about that at all. All right. So let's get right into it. The article is actually, um, the study was done out of the Department of Pathology. Pathology is basically the study of disease. And it was done at the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston in Galveston, Texas in the US. And this is published in Frontiers, uh, Frontiers in Immunology. So this is a, their immunological uh essentially journal. And so I'm going to link this up for you again. 2407 is today's show, stephencabral.com forward slash 2407. And before we just, it's a really short excerpt that I'm going to give you and then I'm going to link the full article. I'm holding up my buddy Walter here. And so whenever I go over this inside of IHP or whatever, I like to be able to show you what's going on because on the outside of this human, all you have is skin basically. And sure, if you have some skin-based imbalances, you'll see something. But the problem is what we don't see is what's going on under the skin. And this is all the uh, organs essentially under the skin. And so I want you to be able to look at all of this hidden material of what makes us run under the skin that you can't see. And that is actually where the disease is manifesting. Okay, so let's let's get right into it. All right. So uh, again, I'll link it up. It's called Environmental Exposures and Autoimmune Diseases, Contribution of Gut Microbiome. So right there in the title, what are they sharing with us? Something's going on from the environment, and there's a connection to the gut. Okay, let's check it out. It's called, well, again, I'll, I'll go through that. Um, the excerpt says this, environmental agents have been gaining more attention in recent years for their role in the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases. Increasing evidence has linked environmental exposures, including trichloroethene, which is TCE, silica, mercury, pristane, pesticides, and smoking to a higher risk for autoimmune diseases, just referred to as ADs. However, potential mechanisms by these environmental agents contribute to the disease pathogenesis remains largely unknown. Dysbiosis of the gut microbiome is another important environmental factor that has been linked to the onset of different autoimmune diseases. Altered microbiota composition is associated with impaired intestinal barrier function and dysregulation of mucosal immune system. But it is unclear if gut dysbiosis is a causal factor or an outcome of autoimmune disease. In this review, our Article, we described the recent epidemiological and me mechanistic evidences linking environmental occupational exposures with various autoimmune diseases. 
Secondly, we discuss how changes in the gut microbiome composition, which is dysbiosis, could contribute to disease pathogenesis, especially in response to environmental chemicals. All right, so now let me translate that into English. And um, what I want to share with you is this, basically line by line. They say that there are things that could set off the immune system creating disease pathology. Okay, so let's go back to pathogenesis. Pathogenesis means something like mercury or pesticides or these um, basically part lubricants, which is called the pristane or smoking. Again, we know I've talked about smoke many, many times in the podcast, and I'm telling you right now, there is no healthy smoke. All right, so there's no healthy smoke for the human body. All right, so here's the thing when any one of these heavy metals or something gets into your body. Now, some are more natural than others. We're talking about synthetics. Uh, that That's you know really more of the issue, although mercury, of course, in the environment is not good. But pesticide is synthetically made. We've talked about that before with glyphosate. Uh, pristine is as well. And so what I want to share with you is this, though, is these chemicals get into this body through the eyes, nose, mouth, or uh, transdermally through the skin, okay? So they can be ingested, they can be inhaled. It's not as likely to get it through your eyes, but you certainly can. Um, there's mucous membrane there as well. And then what happens? Okay, what happens is it gets then absorbed into your bloodstream, all right? So when it gets absorbed into your bloodstream, it then takes a pass through the liver and the liver filter as much as, much as it can. Here's your liver right here. One of the reasons why we talk so much about doing a functional medicine detox every quarter, and they've been talking about this for thousands of years, seasonally detoxes, uh, is that this liver, a after a while, it's been basically it's become congested. What does that mean? Well, you get thicker bile, et cetera, and it's not able to clean your blood as well. It's still doing it. It's still detoxing your body. I'm not saying that it's not, but it does not have the same ability to clean the body with what's called phase one and phase two detox as it has before. And I've explained that, um, and I, I give a whole free course on detox if you want to learn more about it. Uh, we'll try to link it up, but it's stephencabal.com forward slash D well, just go to steamcabal.com forward slash courses and you can click on the detox one, which is, which is free. Okay. So basically these chemicals come from the outside world. We inhale them, uh, or they get absorbed through the skin or they're on our foods like pesticides, right? Okay. So now they come into the body and all of them aren't able to be filtered by the liver and then move through our intestines out of our body or filtered by the kidneys and moved through out through the urine. So what happens is then these chemicals start to settle in. They may settle in inside of the brain or fat tissue. Uh, brain is predominantly fat and same with the adipose tissue. And that creates inflammation and swelling too. It could lead to things like Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, Parkinson's, with some of the nervous system as well, uh, and it can certainly lead to weight gain, uh, inflammation, puffiness, etc. Higher levels of estrogen, higher levels of stress hormones like cortisol. We know that these things happen. Okay, but they can also settle into the thyroid, right? So we've got our thyroid right here. Uh, my buddy Walter here doesn't have any arms if you're watching this on video, uh, but it could settle into the joints as well and cause something like rheumatoid arthritis. Again, we know these things to be true. But the other factor is this. It may actually accumulate in the biofilms of the intestines or it may contribute to intestinal permeability. What does that mean? Well, my buddy here is uh, a representation of a human and small intestines about 20 feet or so long, large intestines about five or six feet long, and all of that can become more permeable, typically more the small intestine, but again, um, they both can become permeable. And when it becomes permeable, it allows then more bacteria, it allows undigested food uh, particles, typically proteins, to get absorbed into the bloodstream. And that was the last part. So they caught the, the exact line was altered microbiota composition. Microbiota is just the bacteria, the good and bad bacteria in your gut, um, is associated with impaired intestinal barrier function. Okay, that means that this barrier is basically a single cell um, that is semi-permeable. It allows the good stuff into your bloodstream and it keeps the bad stuff inside your intestines, which is essentially the outside of your body. That's how it's supposed to be. And then, um, so that that's called the intestinal barrier. And when it becomes dysfunctional, it becomes wider. So there are wider gaps, so more proteins or bacteria can spill out or waste. And then the last part to their quote was, um, and dysregulation of the mucosal immune system. All right, well, what does that mean? Uh, surrounding your intestines, uh, and basically the ear, nose, and throat all the way down, is something called your mucus-associated lymphoid tissue. I've spoken about that before. It's called the malt. And there's also something called the gut associated lymphoid tissue called the GALT. And what that is, is believe it or not, right here in your gut, basically from your rib cage um, down below your belly button, um, is 
80% of the immune system lives in and around those in that intestinal tract. And what happens is it's there because it gets first passed. It gets to try to grab onto and, and mark uh, as an antigen or a pathogen as it comes through the intestines into your body. So that's, that's very effective, and that's exactly how your body's meant to work. However, with increased intestinal permeability, or as they describe it, intestinal barrier function dysfunction, what happens is you have more spilling out. So the immune system, guess what? It becomes more aggravated, right? Why? What does that mean? Well, it's not more aggravated for no reason at all, right? I, again, like conventional medicine, even though they have the research in front of them, they're even saying that it's true, still somehow believes that the immune system has become dysfunctional on its own. Like it's, it's purposely doing this. No, it's not purposely doing this, right? We know it's not purposely doing this. Eventually, conventional medicine will come fully around to this. We know why it's doing it. Environmental toxins, that's one big reason. Infections can be another. Uh, and gut dysbiosis, those are three of the main reasons. Those are three big reasons for autoimmune-based issues. Again, this is in the science. No one from natural health is making this up. This is actually the science. And, and it's stated right here, and I've stated it over and over. And again, the reason why I'm trying to be so forceful with this point is that we know how to fix autoimmune-based issues. Again, now I have to give you the disclaimer that we cannot treat any disease, uh, no medical advice, no medical treatments, no medical cures, no medical diagnosis. All right, so those are the ones I have to give you. Again, what I'm sharing with you is that everything has an underlying root cause. All right. If you understand the underlying root cause, then you can work backwards. So if you have an autoimmune issue, what do you want to do? Like, again, like this is why we do the Cabral concept. It's because we want you to take actionable steps that I know will help you get your life back. They help me get mine back. I want to do the same for you. Again, my mentor helped me. I'm simply trying to pay it forward and help you as well. So what do you need to do? Well, you need to make sure that you are removing these heavy metals from your body. Okay? You need to make sure that you are rebalancing your gut and sealing up that gut wall. That's the first place to start for every human being. I would work on stress along with that. That's why people say, hey, if you can only do one thing, what would you do? I said, I can't just do one thing, but I can do two. I can work on the amount of stress a human being is under, and I can work on the amount of stress that their body is under, namely the gut, right? So that's what we do. And so a, a simple, well, the best way possible would be to, to run the, the gut bundle or the big five labs. That's absolutely the best to do. You can find them at stevencabral.com forward slash labs. You don't have to run them with us though. Just keep that in mind. My job is to bring you the information. You can do with it whatever you'd like. And you could run the labs with your naturopathic doctor. You could run them with an IHP level two. You could run them with my team, the Equal Life team. Totally up to you. Just, but I just want you to know the information is available to you. You can do the bacteria and parasite stool test. That's the number one lab to assess H. pylori, parasites, bacteria, and it does a decent job at finding yeast. A better lab for finding the candida is the candida metabolic and vitamins test. Now, for food sensitivities, it's the IgG food sensitivity test. Um, that's called the gut bundle. And you can, again, you can find that at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. And again, you can choose who you would like to run that with. Let's say you don't want to do those things. Okay, I understand. Now, what you could do is a 21-day functional medicine detox. After that, you can do a heavy metal detox. Okay? And then at the same time, or after it, you could do something called the CBO protocol and CBO finisher to rebalance the gut. How long would all of this take you? Well, about 21 days for the functional medicine detox. The heavy metal detox is about six weeks, but it's very, again, you can go about your life, right? You're literally going about your life and trying to lower your high mercury foods. And we teach you that that's all free in these podcasts. And then the CBO protocol is 12 weeks. Okay, so you can do it concurrently with the heavy metal if you'd like to. It's totally up to you. But in the grand scheme of things, this is why I always tell people, people ask me all the time, how long will it take for me to get better? No doctor or health practitioner could possibly let you know that answer. It's not possible. What I can do, though, is tell you how long that these protocols take to work. And it's about three to six months for an autoimmune, for a real big health issue. A lot of people have bloating, they have gas, et cetera. Okay, a lot of that can be fixed within 21 days. Right? I mean, honestly. Um, but for real autoimmune-based issues, about three to six months. How long did it take me? Six months. Right? I mean, that's, that's what it took me when I found the right... It took me 10 years to find the right person. My mentor, Dr. Pete. I spent 10 years trying to get well. How long did it take me to get well? Well, you could say it took 10 years learning all these different things. And yeah, sure, that's part of it. I do agree with that. But six months on her protocols and I was better. Now, did I, have I continued to get better since then? Of course, that's part of the journey that we're all on, right? We can get better and better and better. There's no doubt about that. My immune system got better and better and better over years 
but I was better after six months. You know, so the, like that's the thing I want to share with you is that these things are possible. Uh, we, we've known the answers. We really have. We've known the answers. It was taught to me decades ago, and now finally conventional medicine saying, we weren't wrong. We're not saying we're wrong, but um, okay, yeah, this is proven to be true. All right, so I just want you to have the information. You need to remove the heavy metals. You need to be doing things in overall lifestyle, not to be exposed by these things to the best of your ability. And I have, again, lots of podcasts on that. You can also, again, if you're someone that needs to be shown the data, I'm, I'm, I'm that person as well. I totally get it. You can run an environmental toxicity test. Again, that's at stephencabral.com forward slash labs. You can check these out, but you can actually look for all of these glyphosate and toxins as well inside of your body. You can actually prove it to yourself if you want. Heavy metal tests, that's that's part of the big five. That's the minerals and metals test. Um, so again, all these things are available to you. They really are. I just, I truly want the best for you. I want the best for your family. And I know there's a lot of people suffering from autoimmune issues. Well over 60 million people just in the United States alone. We have the answers. We're able to help. And so again, just reach out, let us know how we can help. Um, and, and that's it. So I just want to share this with you here today. Hopefully it's been helpful, really simple, really straightforward. It doesn't mean it's easy, but the answers are out there. So if the show is helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. <laughs>